So a lot of us have been waiting patiently for a redesigned iMac, and Apple has answered the call by giving us the same one with new internals. I just got an email from Apple. It says, the new 27-inch iMac all-in-one goes all out. Let's let's learn more, shall we? Let's, let's find out what's going on with the new iMac. What's new about it? What's fresh? Here we go. Is, is it wider or is it just me? Is that the new design that we're going for here? It's the desktop that does it all better and faster than ever. Draws you in, blows you away. Everything looks better on a retina display. With its 1 billion colors and 500 nits of brightness, photos and graphics leap off the screen. And for the first time, the 27 inch iMac features true tone technology and a nano texture glass option to reduce glare to the barest minimum. It's an option. It's not standard, you see. It's an op, you can pay for that if you'd like it to be a more usable computer display. First seen on the Pro Display XDR, the Nano Texture Glass option on the 27-inch iMac is a game changer for workspaces with sunlight, direct light, or changing lighting conditions, such as if you're using your iMac in a car with a power generator or a camper van. This reduces glare while preserving contrast for jaw-dropping image quality. Processor and memory. This is really where it's at. From fast... Oh my god. From fast to fasten your seatbelts. iMac and powerful processors go hand in hand. Up to a six core Intel Core i7 processor gives the 21.5 inch iMac all the power you need for creating in Photoshop, editing video, or making music. And the 27 inch model offers up to a 10 core Intel Core i9 processor. More memory, why is this one so tiny? It can now be configured with up to 128 gigabytes, double the capacity of the previous generation to fly through the most complex pro workflows. That's pretty cool. That's incredible. You can get an iMac with 120 gigabytes of storage. Graphics next level at any level. The graphics on iMac make everything a sight to behold. The 21.5 inch model comes with AMD Radeon Pro 500X series crap. That's cool. That's actually cool. If I'm not mistaken, the previous generation didn't have a dedicated graphics card. Am I mistaken there? And so that's new. Just like with the lower end MacBook Pros, the 13 inch ones, it doesn't have a dedicated GPU. So that's brand new and can be configured with an AMD Radeon Pro Vega 20 GPU to power through tasks like 3D rendering or complex video effects with ease. The 27 inch model brings AMD Radeon Pro 5000 series graphics with up to 16 giga, Jesus Christ, why? Wow, that's incredible, uh, of GDDR6 memory for graphics, intensive workflows like editing UHD video or developing lifelike game environments. That's nice. Give credit where credit's due. That's that's pretty cool that you, you got all that on a thin chassis. More space, more speed. The 27-inch iMac can now be configured with up to a whopping 8 terabyte SSD with up to 3.4 gigabytes of sequential read and write speeds. That is awesome for screaming fast access to all your photo and video library. That's really cool. So I have done tests on my iMac Pro on its um, internal storage. The read write speed was somewhere in the vicinity of 2,700 megabytes. I took two, uh, I think they're called Samsung X5. X, yeah, I think they're called X5. I took two of these um, Samsung X5 uh, M.2 external storage drives. I hooked them up to the Thunderbolt 3 on the back of the iMac, and I um, basically made them a RAID. They write at around 3,000 to 3,500 and read around 4,500 megabytes per second, which is it's pretty awesome. For you to have 3.4 gigabytes per second of sequential read-write speeds, that's on both. That's ve that's actually quite impressive, in my opinion. This might be the new standard that's been around for a while, but as far as my experience goes, this would be an upgrade. And this is not even iMac Pro. This is just iMac. So for that to be standard on the iMac, that's extremely impressive, and it makes me wonder what Apple's got in store for the iMac Pro. It really bums me out that it's basically this... <laughs> Same exact design it's been. Mics, camera, action. From crystal clear video calls and voice recordings to music and movies that fill the room, iMac is an all-star for communications and content. The 27-inch iMac now features a 1080p FaceTime HD camera and a studio quality three mic array. But does it have three cameras on the back of the iMac? Like the iPhone or the iPad? I don't think so. I'm gonna take a wide angle photo of the wall behind my iMac. The Apple T2 security chip comes to the 27 inch iMac. That's new. Face detection, enhanced speaker base response, and Hey Siri makes transcoding HEVC video up to twice as fast as the previous generation. Okay, that's cool. Packed with ports. It's still two Thunderbolt ports. What the hell? 
This is, so, okay, let's just read this and see what they got. Packed with ports and possibilities, every iMac features two super fast Thunderbolt 3 ports and four USB-A ports, giving you plenty of high performance options for connecting external drives, cameras, displays, and more. All iMac models come with a one gigabit ethernet port, and now you can configure the 27 inch iMac with a 10 gigabit ethernet port for up to 10 times the throughput. This is such bullshit that it's two Thunderbolt 3 ports. When this is like, it's, I, I think that's bullshit. And why, why do you get a card slot here, but behold, the new MacBook Pro without an SD card slot. Why is it uh, a bold move on the MacBook Pro to remove that and then they keep it on the iMac? Uh, all right, rechargeable, remarkable, Magic Mouse 2, impressive options. You know, if it's not broken, People have been saying for a long time that this design is old. Like, it, the bezels is just very thick. It needs updating. Maybe because of the pandemic, they haven't been able to implement the new design, but, you know, Canon's still coming out with the R5 and R6, and Sony's still coming out with the A7S III. Um, new shit's coming out all the time. I don't see why Apple couldn't make you know, a redesigned iMac, but maybe they're saving that for the end of the year, or they're saving that for post-pandemic when things have been sorted out with the world. I've been waiting for them to come out with a redesign for a while because I, you know, I didn't want to go and buy an iMac and then find out like two months later. So just give you guys some backstory. A, a while back, I bought a MacBook Pro when it was still the 15 inch design when I thought like, okay, this is the latest. It just came out. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM in it. So this is what I've been waiting for. And I mean, surely it's not going to be updated for like a year. And then two months later, they updated it. And then I found out this is just a thing that they were doing where every two to three months, they're updating the MacBook Pros with newer specs. Let's configure this. If you were to max this baby out, this puppy out, what, what would the max be? Nano texture, $500. Oh my goodness. In this instance, I think it'd be worth it over like, let's say the MacBook Pros. I think it is worth it to up upgrade the processor. The RAM, I believe you can do yourself because I mean, they haven't changed the design. Let's check it out, baby. Where is it? Where's the picture? Yeah, you can still update the RAM yourself. Update, upgrade. You can still upgrade the RAM yourself to 128 gigabytes. A whopping 128 gigabytes. So you can open Chrome faster and have more tabs open. Hello, RedTube. Radeon Pro. Let's go to the max. What are we looking at? 62, 6300. Oh, $6,300, okay. And then eight terabytes of storage. This thing, this puppy's as much as almost a uh, a Mac Pro, you know, without any bells and whistles, without anything usable. And then if you want 10 gigabytes, just for fun, just throw that on top, even though no one in California really has access to that. This is uh, $8,800. Let's assume that you decided to get the RAM elsewhere. You could probably save yourself a, a good chunk of change there. Let's take a guess and say $600, $1,000 to get 128 gigabytes of RAM. You're still looking at $7,200 here. Assuming that you need eight, eight terabytes, good God, eight terabytes of storage. I think at that point, I'd probably go external. For video editing, I would still go external. I would not get eight terabytes of internal storage. This is just senseless to do so. So I'd probably go to four terabytes, which puts me at five grand. Not too shabby. Plus another thousand for the RAM. Because, you know, eight gigabytes ain't gonna cut it, baby. All right, cool. Well, that was fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed a little bit of that. I wanna know your feelings in the comments below. Are you upset or are you, you find this copacetic? Hey, you know. Something's better than nothing. Something's better than nothing. You know, hey, new specs, hey. Keep up with the uh, competing technology out there. So, uh, all right, cool. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out. I am Jabby Kway. Peace out.